Memory. By many accounts, memory is what makes us, us. Our sense of self, according to many philosophers and scientists, is informed by what we remember and don't remember. But what does it mean if everyone around us misremembers the exact same thing? Today's topic will be covering a widely known phenomena that's swept the internet in recent years. We'll be covering just a few common theories. We're just trying to see what the most likely answer is. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. You might already have an idea of what we're talking about today. It's the Mandela Effect. If you are otherwise uninitiated into the world of the Mandela Effect, it's a term used to describe a collective, culturally ingrained false memory, or when a large number of people's long-term memories contradict recorded history. For example, do you remember what accessories the Monopoly Man is wearing? What does Darth Vader say to Luke Skywalker? Is it Berenstein or Berenstein Bears? What causes this unnerving and sometimes scary phenomena? The term itself was created by paranormal consultant Fiona Broom at the 2010 Dragon Con. She discovered that a great number of the folks she was slated to speak with at the conference had the memory of Nelson Mandela dying in the 80s, when in reality Mandela was imprisoned by the South African government until 1990. He was released and continued on to become the first president of South Africa in 1994, eventually passing away in 2013. The effect likely existed prior to Broom's experiences, but she gets credit for coining the term and popularizing the discussion online. There are a great many of these floating around the internet, and you've probably seen or heard a few of them. For example, which color is chartreuse? Oh, oh, it's, it's the pink one, it's the pink one! Wrong, it's green. What does the evil witch say to the mirror in Snow White? Easy. It's mirror, mirror on the wall. My boy Snoop says so. Mirror, mirror on the wall. And he knows what's up. What? Wrong. Really? She says magic mirror on the wall. No way. Provet. Magic mirror on the wall. Touche. How many states are there in the United States? I am A. Blinking, the vampire hunter, and I say 51. Well, I'm Sarah, I'm the president of Mordor, and I say 52. Well, I'm a real president, George Washington, and I do declare you both wrong. It's 50. What do you remember? And does it align with reality? If it doesn't, don't fret. You're not alone. But what in the world is happening to our memories? There are many explanations to root through. Some of them are more credible than others. Some suggest that the Mandela Effect is caused by alternative scientific phenomena, which are all, and I must emphasize this before I go any further, completely unfounded and cannot be proven using the scientific method. That being said, they're way more fun than what's probably going on. One of the more popular theories hinges on the idea that our incorrect memories are actually correct memories of a different timeline. Broom stipulates that maybe staring at the TV back in 1988 or whenever, we slid forward to 2013 and saw Mandela's funeral on TV. And a blink, perhaps literally later, we were whisked back to 1988. Others argue that these effects are just byproducts of time travelers tweaking history for monetary gain. There are those who attribute the effect to quantum computing. Web company Gaia says, As quantum computers interact with the various states of the atomic and subatomic particles within their spheres, they affect other particles within the realities of different dimensions, which is a bunch of technobabble that doesn't mean anything to anyone. The most fun or buckwild theory posits that CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is using their Large Hadron Collider, which discovered the Higgs boson in 2013, to knowingly manipulate black holes to create space-time loops to further their own nefarious intentions or some other science fiction humbug. This hilarious hypothesis is so prevalent that many come to refer to the Mandela Effect as the CERN Mandela Effect. Okay. This is all to say that these theories are super fun to think about, but when we try to apply them to the real world, they lose their clout. The scientific method requires a hypothesis that can undergo replicable testing, but since all these theories depend upon assumptions that are untestable, they have little to no scientific standing whatsoever. 
If time travelers aren't manipulating the world to their benefit and CERN isn't controlling our minds, what might actually be behind the Mandela Effect's widespread influence? It is far more likely that the fallibility of memory is behind why so many people go through the exact same disconnect with reality. Daniel Schachter, PhD of Harvard University's psychology department, has outlined what he calls the seven deadly memory sins. Schachter identifies them as the sins of transience, absent-mindedness, blocking, misattribution, suggestibility, bias, and persistence. Transience is a memory sin of omission, defined by the fading of memory over time. It's one of the simpler sins. You forget things as time goes on. Next is absent-mindedness, which occurs when we forget something because our mind is not focused on what we need to remember, like misplacing an important document because you were too concerned thinking about what was going on at work. Blocking is when you attempt to recollect something, but the memory escapes you. Like when you can't remember an actor's name, like uh, when I forgot Tom Hanky Panky's name in that uh, movie we watched the other day. Hey, uh, what was it? Damn it. It's full. Shut up and let me do this. All of it ends with an F. The fourth is suggestibility. The idea is that a person can influence how you remember something by asking leading questions that input information that may or may not be relevant or true. This sin is easily abused by individuals in positions of power, like police officers or journalists attempting not to find the truth but get an answer that fits their narratives. When you were throwing away my old yoga mat, did, did you spill your coffee on the living room couch? I never spilled my coffee on the couch. So you admit you throw away my old yoga mat? Next we have misattribution, a memory sin in which you recall information but forget where you obtained it. This sin is particularly dangerous, as it can lead to one incorrectly assuming inaccurate information comes from a reliable source. Bias is the act of rewriting our memories to fit into the values that we hold in the moment of remembering. Like thinking about your childhood. If you look back in anger, you'll remember moments differently, and vice versa. Last we have persistence, probably the worst of the bunch. Think of the last time that you were laying in bed remembering some embarrassing thing you said, but no matter what you do, you can't stop reliving that moment over and over. Forrest Gump! That's the... Mm, that's the movie. These memory sins are likely the source of why we encounter so many of these misrememberings. What might start as a simple misunderstanding, over time, fades through transience, morphs through bias, and finally congeals into a false memory. And only when we are confronted with the truth... You can't handle the truth! do we realize that something has gone wrong. This is called confabulation, otherwise known as the replacement of a gap in a person's memory by falsification that he or she believes to be true. Under the right circumstances, any and all of the sins mentioned before can lead to this. It's also possible that many Mandela effects are just misinformation. One mistake by one person with a Facebook page or a YouTube channel informs thousands, they inform the other people around them, and sooner or later you have a massive group of misinformed people. Then if one were to present them with the corrected fact, they might experience a Mandela effect. Psychology professor Theodore Flournoy invented the term cryptonesia to represent ideas that originate in memory but appear to be original to the individual conjuring up the idea. Well, that explains why Grill thinks he's the one who invented the dab. You mean my yash? The cool move I made up on the spot last month? It's, it's a dab, okay? It was created a while ago, and the, okay. the people who did invent it, they don't even do it anymore. As you can see, it's possible that cryptomnesia too plays some part in the Mandela effect. It's also useful for us to bring up confirmation bias, as a possible reason why so many of these effects have cropped up in recent years. According to Raymond S. Nickerson, PhD of Tufts University, confirmation bias is the act of seeking or interpreting of evidence in ways that are partial to existing beliefs, expectations, or hypothesis in hand. For example, if one believes that all birds are actually government surveillance drones, which is obviously false, confirmation bias would be the act of searching for drones shaped like birds to log as evidence to prove their theory and ignoring the existence of you know, actual birds. Obviously birds are real, bro. However, I'm not so sure about those quote-unquote giraffes. Confirmation bias plays a very important role in alternative science theories for the Mandela Effect. If one already believes in supernatural explanations, they are more likely to interpret evidence in ways that prove their theories. There are a 
great many possible explanations as to why we experience the Mandela effect, but there haven't been any clinical studies on why this occurs, so it's really all just speculation. Still, some speculation is more reliable than others. Does the Monopoly man have a monocle or not? He doesn't have one and never has. Oh man. Who gives a damn about Monopoly Man? What I do know is that Darth Vader definitely says, Luke, I am your father. I love that movie. Best Star Wars. I have a bad feeling about this. No. I am your father. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be brew. No. No. And lastly, is it Berenstain or Berenstein? I, I know this one, it's the Berenstein Bears. Berenstein. The Berenstein Bears. Oh, pardon my French, but this is bull beep. <laughs> Maybe the Mandela effect is just confabulation. Maybe it's just that we're not paying close enough attention. Hey, it could even be converging timelines, but even the great Fiona Broom, who coined the term herself, is well aware of the flimsy credibility of alternative scientific theories. She says, my memory is at least as fallible as everyone else's. And whether those explanations are credible is another matter, and in the eye of the beholder. So at the end of the day, just keep up the search for answers and make sure that your ideas are really your own. Because really, if we can't trust our own memories, what can we trust? Um, by the way, Bru, I've been, I've been meaning to ask, is, is that a new hat? I like it, but I never pegged you as a, as a hat guy. What? I've, I've always worn this hat. Weird that you just now noticed. Weird that you just now noticed. Weird that you just it's now the noticed. Mandela effect. Converging, converging timeline. Converging timeline. All birds are actually government surveillance, surveillance drones. It's the Weird Mandela effect. Weird, Weird that you just now noticed. Weird that you just now noticed. Weird that you just now Hey, uh, a bonus question. Um, is it pronounced capillary? or capillary. I've, <laughs> I've been told there's a wrong answer by the internet. USA! 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 USA!